Hello and welcome to Critical Strike, episode 44. I'm Josh Bucknell, and here with me is the love of my life, Mr. Kyle Dumont. I love you too. Okay, been yeah. doing some packing, a lot of packing. Fudge. Yeah, been packing fudge. A new fudge packing job. Got it in the fudge factory, in the meat packing district. Very good, very good. Why, why they would have a fudge packing factory in a meat packing plant or a meat packing district boggles the mind. But hey, it's a good job. I pack a lot of stuff. Well, because they're packing meat and fudge in the same thing. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Fudgy steak. That actually kind of sounds disgusting. Actually, no. Nah, maybe you gotta you gotta find the complementary flavors there. Maybe like lamb. Maybe a pork. But lamb is very greasy. No. What what, what you gotta do is uh get uh what is that mint? Yeah, you get mint uh chocolate and, uh fudge. Put that around some lamb. Bet you that'd be pretty good. Yeah, see, I'm not really a, a fan of. No, I'm. But I'm not very a fan of very many chocolates other than uh, like dark chocolate. I like it. Yeah, I, I actually don't like chocolate. I like my chocolate. Like I like my chicken. Dark. Moving on. What? <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, jungle fever for chocolate. Yeah. Where, where was I going, Kyle? Where was I, I going? I don't... I don't... Honestly, don't know. But, uh, you're moving. Yes, I am moving. I'm moving back up to... the north. Coming up closer to me. Yep. We're gonna be hanging out every weekend. Uh, only if you want to. You're gonna be coming up the fun spot. I might make that journey. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I'd have to get a car first. Speaking of, actually, uh, Mr., uh, you know, our listener, Sneaky Turtle Egg... Yes. He was, uh, I was talking to him the other night, and at next year's classic video game tournament, he and I have kind of agreed to uh, work on a, on a world record on a two-player game. Really? Yeah. What, uh, what spurred this? I don't know. He's been talking about the game, and I've been talking about poop, and it kind of somewhere met in the middle, and uh, now we're like, you know, we should go for a, a world record together. Lock our names in history. Cool. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So, are you, so, are you just going to be training for it? Yeah, actually, I think what I'm going to end up doing is like every like three days train for like an hour. Are you going to wear ankle and uh, what are those wrist wrist weights? Yeah, I'm going to be wearing Sweat like band. I'm going to be wearing a big key and uh, you know wearing weighted like weights and uh, wrist weights and all this other shit. Yeah. You think I'm fast now? Wait until I take off all this weight. Oh my god, my speed and power level has just doubled. And it's over 9,000. Uh, what? 9,000? <laughs> Kyle, Vegeta. what is Josh's what is power this? level? <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, it's... Uh, Josh, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000, obviously. You do not uh, have enough A's in that. Dragon Ball Z. Now, that original dub was so awful, but good at the same time. Yeah. Speaking of, have you watched any of uh, Dragon Ball Kai? Uh, I watched the first episode, and their voices made me want to stab me, yeah, stab me ears out with the pencil. Made me stab want to stab me ears out with the pencil. Stab my ears out with the pencil. Nice. I don't know, like, <clears throat> I watched uh, the first episode of Dragon Ball Kai, and then I watched the first episode of Dragon Ball Z. 
obviously okay. the same thing. But uh, but one pacing remastered. is the pacing is a lot faster. Yeah, because they cut out all that awful shit. Yeah, like um, because like by the end of Dragon Ball Z, like they were just introducing Goku, and uh, at the end of Dragon Ball Kai, like Raditz was already there. Oh. And that was pretty slick, you know. I'm, I'm down for that if they get better voice work, I guess. Yeah, it's, I never pictured Goku's voice could be so shrill. Well, it's done by a chick. What? Really? If I recall, yeah. God, that is awful. I don't know. It's been a long time since I watched that stuff. But uh, so yeah, back on to the uh, subject at hand. You're moving. Yes, I am. And you're going back north. Yep. And you're leaving, what, Monday? Monday. So that is two days from now. All right. I uh, I rented a car. I'm just going to pretty much take up all the stuff that I deemed important and uh, hauling it with me. Because I already sent most of my stuff up there. Uh, What was it, like last week, two weeks ago? And, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You're going back to the homeland and... uh, Yep. Making some bucks. Yes, I am. I got a transfer, and Tuesday I'm going to go meet with my new boss and be like, hey, I'm super awesome. Can I get a raise? <laughs> yeah. Look, soon I'm going to have your position, so you might as well just st- stop delaying yeah. it. Because I'm me, all right? L- let's be honest here. Look at this yearly review. It's awesome. I just apparently need to make more jokes in the office. <laughs> yeah. You just go up to him. I made my own review, and I gave myself your position. <laughs> Here's my salary. Uh <laughs> Mr. Dumont, the global there's not enough money in the world to give you the salary. Look, buddy, make it happen. I'm fucking Kyle Dumont. Is this right? a million trillion dollars? It's Google, I, know, I all think right? so. It's Google. That's a lot of zeros. What is that, a hundred? Hundred zeros? Something so like a that. Thousand. It's a lot of zeros. That would be awesome. You should do that. You should totally do that. <laughs> I would ruin the world's economy, but I would be the richest person ever. Yep. I mean, you pay for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you just hire a stand-in. You don't even do the podcast yeah. anymore. <laughs> I hire actors for both of us. <laughs> They're like, hello and welcome, and then you're like, now interrupt him. Yeah, now interrupt him. <laughs> interrupt him now. Oh, I have a be... shock collar on him just to make him spaz out every once in a while. <laughs> I think that'd be a really authentic performance. Right. Every once in a while, he's got to show up later, be hungover. Look, I've only done that, like, four times. Maybe five. Does being drunk on the podcast count? Yes. Okay, maybe like ten. <laughs> so out of, like, the, the 30 episodes you've been on... Yeah, about a third of them I was either hungover or drunk. Yeah. Well, not drunk, but drinking. You're a bad podcaster. Well, I think you scrapped one of them, or we had to redo it, and you had to wait until I sobered up. Yep. <laughs> there's been a couple like that. I think in total of the podcast history, there's about four that I've never released. Really? Something like that, yeah. Maybe three. Huh, I, don't, I don't really recall that. It's shameful. And then there's that one that we did that was so bad that I put the warning in in the front of how bad it was. Uh, I vaguely remember that. What was the deal with that? I think we were both dead. I remember because that's when Keith was still with us. And Keith had a nasty cold, if I recall. And I was typical me. I was awesome. Um, I think I was tired from work or I was hungover. Yeah, or your age just came out of remission. No, I was definitely hungover. I remember that. I think it was the day after my birthday party. We recorded it, and I was just like, oh. But there is something I want to get out there. What? We've been sticking to our schedule. Yes, we have. I- I'm surprised. I honestly did not expect us to last this long. And you're the one that's going to be breaking it. Look, it's not my fault. I have two weddings next month every other week. Well, I have... Two weddings in a span of four weeks. So, just so people know that we're going to be missing one episode at least, uh, and the other one I'm going to be putting a critical music in its place. Well, who I who the fuck has a wedding on Halloween? 
Yeah, that's weird. What the fuck? Emo. Emo bastards. Ruining our podcast schedule. Like, look yeah, at that. We're seriously. Like, we're like all awesome now because we've been sticking to it. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to make my wedding on uh, Halloween just to fuck with Kyle and Josh. I think I'm going to make them reschedule it. Spend all that money. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, guys, I can't go to your wedding because uh, I got a podcast. You, got, you do a podcast? What is it about? Video games? Fuck it. We're doing it on Halloween. No, I think people go, what's a podcast? And then I have to go, well, it's uh, it, it's an internet radio show. i just like, you never heard of me? Here, here I got some autographs right here. Big picture of me with my <laughs> autographed it. I, just, well, I already I, have business cards for my other podcast. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, wow. Five I'll episodes in. Five episodes in, and we're going to make business cards. Actually, we had them three episodes in. So, uh, Kyle, what have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've uh, been moving, you know, putting some stuff, throwing a lot of shit out. I've uh, been playing a few video games. I was continuing to play Professor Layton. I am now, I think, two-thirds of the way through that game. And I'm starting to lose steam, which, you know, a big surprise. Because mm. it's, it's the same old shit. You know, they, I... They still haven't answered why the fuck Luke hangs around with the professor. Because he's pedo bear. He, he gets him to go with him with candy. He's like, <laughs> Luke, come help me solve these puzzles and I'll give you candy. Oh man, Pedo Bear still makes me giggle every time I see it. I think I'm gonna it... get I'm gonna get one of those Pedo Bear shirts. You should. And wear it to work. Maybe on like a Saturday if if I'm working Saturdays, which I really hope I'm not. Yeah, better not be. But uh, no, it's I think like this whole time he's either he's using something against Luke to go with him. Like he's either like I know you like candy. I got these M and M's. You should come with me. And help me solve all these puzzles, or he's got something like, "I raped your mom, Luke, and if you don't come and help me solve these puzzles, I'm gonna release the video online." Yeah, I like to picture the professor as a psychotic lunatic. Like, really, he's out to help everybody, but in the but back he's, end, yeah, he's but he's fucking so deranged. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? What? That's not what I picture at all. I just pictured him like murdering people <laughs> and. You know, carving mazes onto people's flesh, and all right, Luke, I removed one organ. Which organ did I remove? If you follow these clues, See, I'm just helping. I'm just picturing him as going around helping people and then raping Luke in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two different care. minds, I guess. Yeah, I think You're... mine's a cooler story. <laughs> yeah. Butt rape? <laughs> well, I mean, it is a British-made game, if I recall. Not that really. Is that really... level five British? I think so. I don't remember. Uh, then, if so, are. there's terrible, terrible British accents in that, like fake British accents. Honestly, I have no idea where level five is from. Actually, I thought they were out in like the West Coast somewhere, with every other game developer. We need some East Coast developers. We should make our own developing team. Squad. I always, I always said back when I used to do all that programming and stuff when I was a coder, I always said like, uh, I'm you gonna make coats. My own... Yes, I'm gonna make coats, and while I'm making coats, I'm gonna make video games, and at the same point, I'm gonna name my studio Dead Baby P- Productions. <laughs> I don't think that would go over well. Hey, Sony, I'm from, uh, I'm Josh McNulton. I'm from uh, Dead Baby Productions. <laughs> no, I'm from, I'm from DBP. You might have heard of me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that would go over very well. You know, you just gotta gloss it over and then be like, yeah, what's DDP stand for? Uh, you know, Dead Baby Productions. And then they just cease contact with me. Yeah. And walked out of the building. The phone. <laughs> Not even that. They just get up and leave the office. Right. And just lock the door behind them. And then Ken Kuragi comes in. He's like, dude. We can totally make this game for, with Dead Baby Productions with the PlayStation 3, and it will be in 4D. Imagine that. Games are already in 4D. Only the PlayStation 3. We've been over this, Kyle. Yes, we have. A, a long time ago. A long time ago, and it's going to get me aggravated, and then I'm going to get angry. 
So we're just and Rich gonna go. is going to call you out on it. Yeah. So we're we're just going to go. We're going to move along, and I will get over my anger issues. PlayStation Three puts games in four D. Move on. Uh, okay. So losing Steam, Professor Layton, whatever. Scribblenauts came out, and I was like, uh, I was iffy. I think I was iffy on the last podcast. I don't really remember because that was like two weeks ago. But uh, I picked it that wasn't up. up then. No, no, no. It was what? no? You were, you were talking about you... it. Yeah, we were you talking were about it. And I was like, that sounds stupid. Right, right, right. But uh, I picked it up, and I had fun for the first ten levels of World One. I'm like, oh man, you could do so much. And then I got to puzzle like one dash eleven. And then I spent 20 minutes on it because I didn't want to use a gun or anything. And I was literally twisting the DS in my hand and you could hear it creaking. Which one is 1-11? 1-11 is the one where you have to collect the three flowers in the basket. And there's the wasp and the fish. I don't remember how I solved that one. And there's a cliff. So yeah, I, I remember it. I don't remember how I solved it. I didn't use a gun. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm not trying to do, but I was like, okay, there's a bee. Okay, fuck the bee. I'm going to catch it in the net. Okay, it's in the net, and now it's still stinging me to death. All right, this isn't good. Okay, and now I'm dead. Fuck. All right. Uh, Oh, I know. I'll use smoke on it. Okay, it it made the bee pass out. Great. Run over to the river. Hop in. Get eaten by the fish. Fuck. <laughs> Goddamn fish! Yeah, I go. I go to smoke the bee again. Put the smoke exactly where I dropped it last time. Didn't work, and it dissipated. And like, well, that's bullshit. That now that that took away one of my allotted slots. I don't like that. So I restarted. Uh, I found out that the smoke would only make the bee pass out every two out of five tries, and oh. then it would only pass out for ten seconds. So I eventually figured out that I got to take it. Stick it in the hut, because there's a house there. So then I'm trying to figure out the mystery of how to get the fish. So I tried a fishing net. That didn't work, because it won't stretch from one corner to the other. I tried a fisherman, a man who is supposed to catch fish. Do you know what happened, Josh? He killed the fisherman. No. The fisherman went up to the lake, walked to the beginning of the level, walked back to the lake... And just kept going back and forth like that. So well, I mean, started. He, he had the cliff, though. I mean, I'm sure he couldn't do anything with the cliff. I mean, what you should have done is drop, is made a harp, harpoon and threw it at the uh, fish. But I'm trying not to hurt the fish. I'm trying to do, like, non-violent solutions. So then I get a fishing pole, and I use it on the fish. And the fish attacks me while it's on the fishing pole. And I die. <laughs> Again. <laughs> you pull it up. It's like, I'm going to bring this fish up here so it can come up and kill me. Yeah. I did not expect that to happen. So then I think, you know what? Fuck the fish. I'm going to put a Tesla coil in there. And I was surprised. There's an actual Tesla coil. Tesla coil does not electrocute the water and kill the fish. <laughs> so then I was like, well, fuck it. So I made a helicopter, flew over everything... Grabbed the flower on the cliff, uh, shot the bee, and then grabbed the uh, the other flowers. That's and funny. And even, even after I put them all in the basket and handed it to it, I couldn't complete the level. And I said, you know what? This this game is not me. This Rather, this game is not worth breaking my DS over. I'm going to say that game is worth breaking your DS over. I've pretty much seen all it had to offer. The, no, the, it's too <sighs> random. Things don't work. They don't work the way they do the. F- they're, it's not uh, consistent. That's it. It's not consistent. Right, right. And that well, is, like things that you would think that would do something, often doesn't, and the, it, that is kind of frustrating. But like, I love the idea behind this game. Oh yeah, it's a good idea. It's just poor execution. What it's you... not e- I mean, mm-hmm. it's not even, okay, smoke, or the Tesla coil in the water, okay, that didn't kill the fish. I can get yeah. over that. 
That's funny, though. Maybe they didn't think about that. But me putting the smoke on top of the V in the same spot ten times, and it only worked four times, that is what bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sometimes the bees are resistant to the smoke. I, I, I don't know. I guess. Uh... It's kind of weird, I guess, but... uh. I don't know, like, I love this game, man. I can't get over this game. I'm laying in bed playing it often. Like, I can't even get past the title screen. Because I'm just sitting there typing things and and trying different things out. Really? Yeah. I just love sitting there and typing these words and see what what comes up and making my own little game out of it. Apparently you can make a vending machine that does nothing but vend starites. That's pretty interesting. I mean, did you do the typical what everybody has to do, like, God versus, like, Vampire? What? Did you type in God and then Vampire? No. I didn't even realize God... Oh, speaking of things you could put in, did you know that you are an option, Josh? (sighs) Let me hear it. So, jokingly, I put in Josh, because it was, you know... You pick up this garbage, and I'm like, well, I don't want to do this. I'll have someone else do it. I'll have Josh pick up the garbage. And lo and behold, a Josh popped up. And do you know what you did, Josh? What did I do? You didn't pick up the garbage. You ate the garbage. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I, I'm i serious. You ate, like, a soda can, like, a chicken leg, and a wad of paper. That's bullshit. I'm so- suing these developers. <laughs> Apparently, you're part goat. I uh, see. When I thought that you you said that I'm in the game, you typed in like Sasquatch or Yeti. <laughs> I didn't think about that because no, I it... actually did that. Did you? And they are in the game. Awesome. What do they do? They fight things. Oh, cool. <clears throat> They're very aggressive, which is weird because I'm not. No. No. <laughs> but I can't believe you didn't do like God versus a vampire. I didn't realize God was an option. It doesn't matter, because the vampire wins. What? He turns God into a zombie. Does that make him Jesus? It makes him dead. He runs around as a a zombie after that. So God loses to a vampire. Well, technically, it wouldn't be a zombie. It'd be more of a ghoul, because zombies are more, you know, necromancy, whereas ghouls are made from a misbite. It's a pretty big fucking technicality. Uh, why don't you make a whole episode about it on your other podcast? There we go. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Good. I hope you do, because I would actually probably listen to it. All right. I think I think we're gonna do that then. I'll throw it out there. But um, I don't know. It's just I love this game. I just can't get over it. Everything that it does, I, I just found fat, fascinating, and uh, it, re- it to me, it rarely does anything wrong. Like everybody was complaining about the controls, like how uh, you. Use the stylus to move, and you also like control the camera with the D-pad. Yeah, I th- that that took some getting used to. I mean, I, the super super floaty controls don't really bother me. It's come on, the I put it in the same spot. It should work. But like the thing with the controls, like I kind of gave that a pass because to me, it feels identical to um, Phantom Hourglass. I'm just putting uh... that out there. Because you controlled the same way. Yeah, you controlled the same way, but I think the controls were a little tighter in our, the Phantom Hourglass. Oh, I'm sure they were, but I'm just saying, like, to to move, you use a stylus, and that's how I'm I'm used to this now because yeah, of Phantom I, Hourglass. I, I mean, I I actually kind of like those controls. Yeah, uh, one thing people also had a, com- a complaint with, which I didn't really have a problem with, but like, say you put a gun down and you tap on it to pick it up. Like, you have to tap on it a couple times, I guess, because they couldn't get it. Yeah. Again, I didn't really have that problem. Do you have a new DS? No. Eh, I kind of had that problem with my fat. I don't have a fat. I have a light, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just better at pointing at little things. I bet you are. This is my penis. Um. Law. You know, it's just fun. I, I, Like I said, I just lay there in bed and just type things. And I mean, the puzzles to me are kind of... Sadly, like the main thing in this game, the puzzles, it's a puzzle game. But that's kind of like an afterthought to me. Yeah, definitely. 
I like how most of the puzzles can be solved with a gun. Well, what was the first thing that I messaged you about when I was playing this? You shot a shotgun. You shot a bee with a shotgun, or a butterfly yeah. with a shotgun. Like the first puzzle or whatever is is like capture the butterfly or whatever. And uh, I was like, okay, well, there's a few different ways I can do this. And my initial response is shotgun, and I just shot it down, and I failed because yeah. I, I killed it, obviously. Uh, so then I just went to a typical net and caught it. I used a rocket launcher and blew out. I blew up the butterfly and the ground beneath the butterfly, killing me. Did you uh, try an atomic bomb yet? No. They have those? They do. It kills what everything and missing? you. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Can you summon it... like an Abrams tank? I don't know. I haven't tried that. I'm sure you can. But like, I don't know if you got to this one. There's a later one like Mick talked about on the Fanboys, uh, where there's this tornado in the middle. And I have, have not. To, okay, you have to try to get past this tornado to get to the star. Okay. And, uh, like, a lot of people are trying it different ways. Some people are, like, trying to brute force themselves past the tornado by, like, flying above it with a jetpack. And, uh, one guy uh, mentioned to Mick that he did it this way, and I actually did it the same way, except a little bit differently. I didn't use the jetpack. But I went up and used the shrink ray on the tornado and shrunk it. <laughs> And then I put wings on myself and flew over it. It'd be funny if we could just shoot the uh, hurricane or the tornado in half. Oh, that would be bad though, because then you have two tornadoes coming after you. Well, I don't. I don't think. Tor- I don't think that's how tornadoes work, Josh. But you don't know how they work in Scribble Knots. Uh, true. I don't know. If you shoot <laughs> something in Scribble Knots, they generally divide in two and continue to function. Maybe. I haven't shot many things, Kyle. I don't know the 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 vast deepness of this game. Yeah. Maybe if uh, it could be like uh, Fantasia, where you just keep shooting the tornadoes, and you have a thousand tiny tornadoes, <laughs> and you that can would just be bad. And then you just kind of fly over them because it's nothing but air. Yeah, I guess you can do that. Actually, like, there's a few different things that you can do though. Like, you can bring in a black hole and suck something up to get around it. You can make a black hole? Yes. Maybe I should give that game another shot. I'm telling you, you Shitty gotta think... programming aside. You gotta think outside the box, Kyle. It's like, I can, I can get past this bee by shooting him or putting smoke under him, or I could put a black hole there and suck him up. I see your point. You just gotta kinda think outside the box. Or I could put a Yeti there to fight him. I did a uh, Kraken vs. God and the Kraken one. Man, God sucks. Yeah, apparently uh, he God never is... wins anything. I think the only thing God beat was uh, a demon. I guess that makes sense. Man, that must mean the demon really sucks. Yeah, like I'll just, like I said earlier though, I just screw around. I'll I'll put like down a vampire and then I'll type sun and I'll watch him turn into dust. Yeah, I don't know. I love scribble nuts, so I I I mean everybody seems to be having some kind of complaint about it, but I don't. I really don't. Eh, let's see. I think we're done with Scribble Knots. Yeah, I'm done with it. Okay. Uh, I haven't really touched my Xbox. They played some Halo Three <laughs> with uh. That's what she said. Uh, ha 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 ha. Nah, I played some Halo Three. That was like just for a little bit. Uh, one of my friends moved like four doors down from me, so I'm like, "Hey, wanna play Halo?" And he's like, "Yeah, okay." And then we played Halo. And then you two were like. All right, we're back in our college days. We, because that's all Halo is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Any interest in ODST? Yeah, I mean, I put it on my mo- top five anticipated games, as you recall. Yeah, but any interest out of it after people said it fucking sucks? I sort of lost interest in it after I heard that it was on two discs, and it's what. Six hour campaign, three hour like six hour campaign, three hour campaign around there. It's relatively short. It's probably like five or six. That boggles my mind. There can't one one that can't take up too much space. Two, there can't be that much multiplayer content that they could just put it on one disc. By all rights, this game should have been like a, a thirty dollar downloadable expansion to Halo Three. That's all it should have been. Ugh. 
Yeah, I, I'm, pr- I'm probably going to run it. That's all I did. I haven't sitting here from Gamefly. I haven't played it yet. I was supposed to uh, start the uh, co-op with Mick. How many person but... co-op is it? Uh... It's probably four, I think. Maybe I'll rent it, and then we could all play. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, I and you know from what I hear, it's definitely worth like a rental. But I wouldn't from what everybody who's played it. I personally I haven't played it, but from what everybody's told me, it's not worth a buy. It really is not. That's, and that's depressing. A shame. But then, like as as one of my friends, Anna, who I follow on the Twitter, Pig Twenty said, uh, I think this is going to be the uh, the start of many bad Halo games. You mean Halo Wars didn't count? Bazing. You got me there. <laughs> I can't really say much. You got me there. I didn't play Halo Wars either, though. Bungie didn't have anything to do with ODST, did they? They did, as far as I know. Uh, huh. You know, Bungie, that, that been... we're leaving Microsoft because we want to move on and do something outside of Halo, so we're going to go back and do Halo? I don't know. It's. I think they wanted to leave Master Chief alone. Let's check the internet's uh, ODST basically, developer? Basically what it comes down to is Bungie is a one-trick pony at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bungie.net. They did do it. Boo Worms, Bungie. Boo Worms. Maybe you should have put Master Chief in it. Maybe you shouldn't even have done it and tried something new for a change. I don't know. Just saying. Putting that out there. What Try has something Bungie new. done besides Halo? Uh. Oh, Oni... Yeah, Myth Oni. series marathon. Uh, Oni. Ugh. Classic games. Yeah, they used to be Mac developers. Remember? Yes, as I recall, Halo was supposed to go on the Mac. Yep, but that doesn't happen. Nobody plays games on the Mac. I mean, let's get real. I mean, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Mac has plenty of games. It's got Warcraft Three, World of Warcraft, The Sims, Photoshop. Garage Band. Garage Band. So, World of Warcraft. Yeah, I've been, been playing play- that every once in a while. Yeah, I know you've I've been, been a bit busy. Nothing Too busy new. to sit down and play the World of Warcrafts. So, nothing new in your adventures in Azeroth? Nope. Nothing nothing particularly new. So, anything else then? Uh. No. I'm, uh. I think I'm about done. Weak sauce. It is. I've been. I've been busy. All right. After that uh, epic fail on Kyle's part, I guess I should epic go into my fail. list. I'm moving. Epic, epic fail, Kyle. Epic fail. Just uh, you, you, you failed pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. Move on. What do you? What, what have you been doing? Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm quite the uh, retro guy as of late. Mm-hmm. You know, I love my retro stuff. So uh, I've been playing the game of getting MMS on my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my my iPhone that. It's like the most superior phone in the world. Apparently, just got a feature that my phone from 1997 had. That's awesome. You had a cell phone in 1997? Yep. I, camera phones were new when I got mine in 2003. Yep. Did you have a phone from the future? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know that explains it. You know cell phones back in the 80s got right. Yeah, I know. They were like... They had a battery pack, and you had to lug them around like a suitcase. <laughs> so, uh, outside of the uh, getting MMS game, I uh, I played some Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Oh, uh, have you? Yeah, I know that at one point you were interested in that. Yes, I was, because as Shining Force 1 and 2. And Altered Beast? Altered Beast, god, that game's so hard. It has Altered Beast Genesis and Arcade on it. Didn't realize there was an arcade version. Oh, the arcade version is badass, man. I love it. I mean, it's basically the same game, but it looks better. And it has more sound. Uh-huh. It's just a really cool game. Uh, 
So I've been, you know, I, I did play a lot of Alter Beast. I beat it. So I'm awesome because I beat Alter Beast. How many people can say that they beat Alter Beast? I have beaten Altered Beast. How many cool people whose whose power level is over nine thousand can say that they beat Altered Beast? I beat Altered Beast. But your power level is not over nine thousand, Kyle. Uh, clearly you haven't seen me without all these weights off. Oh shit. But uh, no, I, I love the uh, collection of games within Sonic's Ultimate Genesis, Cole- Genesis Collection. <laughs> uh, I mean, there there are a few that don't hold up well at all. Like, I don't think Shinobi holds up very well. I don't think I I've don't... ever played Shinobi. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, sketchy because if you go back and you play like Genesis on Super Nintendo, I'll kind of favor the Super Nintendo a hell of a lot more now, even though back then I was a Genesis kid. As was I. Yeah, it's just Genesis games did not age well at all, and that's a it's shame. so weird. Why? Why? Why would the S- SNES games age better? Um, because it was a better system. Uh, I don't know, Josh. Like it allowed for more colors and it allowed for better sound, so everything just looks and feels better than what you're playing with the Genesis. Like, remember every song in the Genesis Genesis kind of had like this twang to it. Yep. Yeah, so that doesn't really hold up very well anymore. Uh, but it's a good collection. I mean, you really can't go wrong. You're getting a shitload of games for pretty damn cheap. Yeah, you are. A lot of good games, too. Yeah, and these are games that you really can't get otherwise anymore. Like unless Shining want... Force 1 and 2? Yeah, unless you want to go out and spend the uh, the money to try to collect them, which Genesis games, some of them aren't cheap. No, they're not. So yeah, I mean, if you have any interest in it, I would say pick it up. It's it's pretty cool. I think I got it for like 30 bucks off of Amazon because I had to rebuy it because I let somebody borrow my original one and they destroyed it. Huh. Is there any uh, uh live multiplayer with it? Or is it no. only local? It's only local. That is retarded. That is stupid. Why? Because it has the ability to go online. It's probably not that difficult to add the 50 lines of code to allow for a player to join. But these are games that I wouldn't want to play multiplayer. Well, some of them. You wouldn't want to play Altered Beast with another person to help you? No. I'm a loner, Kyle. A rebel. Rebel without a cause. I was quoting P.B. Herman, but yeah. And I was Um, quoting that James Dean movie. (laughs) The guy who didn't have a plan. That's right. I don't think I ever saw that, but uh, I don't he know. I also like drove it a lot. motorcycle. Rebel FM. So that's Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Uh, definitely pick it up if you have any interest in in these games. And it's just kind of cool. Like, I, I, it's not a game that I'm going to play seriously. Like, it's definitely not like a a Halo where you're going to go to it every night and and play multiplayer, or just play single player. It's just like a well, I'm bored. I got like a half hour. I'm going to play some Altered Beast. Yeah. It's, it's, Definitely a pick-up-and-play game collection. And the emulation is pretty good, too. I can't really complain about it. Like, Sega, I think, most of all, in the U.S., has released some compilations that have really bad emulation. But this really? doesn't. Yeah. So that's that. I'm going to move on, though. Okay. I already talked about Scribble Nuts, which is awesome. Kyle doesn't like it, though. Um, yeah. Played some NHL 10. How's that going? You have any interest in that? I have some. I don't know what to choose, though. NHL 10 or 2K10 or 2KX? I don't know. 2K10. How 2K10. <laughs> 2KX. Hyper Edition. Well, I mean, I didn't know if they were going with Roman numerals or not. No. Um, you hear that fire truck? No. Oh, okay. Um, Are you burning people, Josh? No. Dear Apollo, I'm burning. Star Volume 4. But uh, NHL 10, um, you know, as you know, I'm a big fan of hockey games. I love hockey. Yes. And uh, back in the PlayStation 2 days, there was a tradition between me and Keith. Where okay. We, every year would pick up NHL 2K and play it online via the PlayStation 2. Okay. And that was basically like our weekly thing. Every Saturday we would play NHL. And... It was badass. That's when I really started to fall in love with NHL games again. Because, like you, I actually really love like NHL 7, 97. Uh, I was a fan of 94. 94. Yeah. 94 was badass, too. So, this kind of 
really brought back my love of playing hockey sports games. And uh, this year, like last year, I picked up NHL 09, and I really didn't play it very much for the main fact that I didn't like the controls. Because with EAs, they're trying to do this more realistic game where you would move your player with one stick and then deke with the other and then shoot with the one that you were moving with. That's awkward. Right, so like for a slap shot, you would pull back on the stick and then press forward with it. And to me, like, I didn't really like that, and I kind of just blew off the game. I said, all right, I'm done with it. I'm not trying it. And I, this year when it came around, <clears throat> uh, I was, like, kind of looking at NHL 2K because I was really interested in one, and I, I loved the 2K series from the past, but they've kind of sucked in the last few years. But they didn't have a demo available, so I, I said, fuck you then. I'm going to download the uh, NHL 10 demo, give it a shot. Worst com- comes to worst, I'll pick it up and I'll play it again. And, uh, you know, I know Mr. Paul Nash, a friend of ours, picked it up. Okay. And so later that night, I went and picked it up and uh, brought it home. I, I, was, I was like, I'm going to try to master these new controls that they're using. Similar thing in NHL 10 with the, uh, you know, pull back on the stick and slap it forward for a slap shot. And I was doing all right. Okay. But the problem is, it just doesn't feel fluid to me. So I was bitching to a couple friends of mine about it while they were playing Halo. They said I was bitching. I wasn't. Fuck them. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try the classic controls. They have one where you use a stick again, but you can also use the face buttons to shoot. Like on the Xbox controller, B would be for slap shot and X would be for a normal shot. Okay. But you have the option to use a stick if you want it. Yeah, I definitely stick with the more classic controls. Right. And ever since I switched to that, it's like now it's actually extraordinarily fun for me. I'm having a blast with this game. Huh. Um, all my I'm using the Bruins, so I got all my favorite players. I got a good control scheme. Uh, the presentation is really good. I love it. You know, your team comes out, the crowd is roaring. Like, I really love the crowd effects in this. Like, if a player comes out and it's one that the crowd loves, they'll start screaming the, the guy's name. And uh, yeah. it's just, there's just a lot of awesome presentation within it. And I would say it's definitely worth picking up. I have no complaints about this game. All right, you maybe mean, I um I might actually get that then. Perhaps you we switch... could play it. Oh yeah, I would definitely play it. You know, once you get to the uh, past the control set- setup, it's actually a really good hockey game. Like it has a demo. You should download it and give it a shot. I think I will do that. Just set it to the uh, classic controls, and hopefully everything will work out. But all right. I haven't tried any of the online yet. I was supposed to um, with Paul from the Video Game Jocks, but he uh, he stood me up for Halo instead. Gasp. Yeah, I was hurt. I, w- I wanted to play. But either way, yeah, it's really cool. I'm doing a season. I think like my Bruins are 11-1-1. One, and one. You don't fuck with the Bruins. I'm a Penguins fan. Yeah, I just destroyed the Penguins, too. No! Oh, yes. I played uh, the Buffalo Sabres a couple games ago. Okay. And I was kind of annoyed because they don't have an achievement for hurting four ca- four of the <laughs> other team's characters. Because <laughs> I was wrecking them, dude. Like, I hurt four of their guys. A couple of them, like, I'm in November in my season right now. And a couple of their guys are out until February. Jesus. I fucked them up. It was awesome. Ah. Oh. So I'm totally addicted to this game. Like, as soon as I get home, I slap on my Xbox and I go. I love it. So, <laughs> Those poor guys. They had it coming to them. Did they? Yep, well, they were trying to score, and I can't have that. No, apparently not. So, uh, after NHL 10, which, by the way, is amazing, everybody needs to go buy it, because <laughs> it has amazing presentation. Um, I played the first level of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Okay. 2. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. Um, I've been waiting for our friend Cripple to pick it up. Because with the first one, he and I did co-op on it, and right. uh, we had a lot of fun with the co-op. It was just, it's it's not a game where like you sit there and you take like very seriously. It's 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 a beat 'em up in a way. Yeah, it's a mindless beat 'em up, and we just shoot the shit and play the game, and that's all we did, and that's all I'm looking for in this one. And uh, so I only played the first level, which, by the way, if if <laughs> you don't have like an hour, don't start it. <laughs> really. Yeah, it has a really long first level. Ugh. 
and uh, it's it's fun. I can't really complain about it from what I played. It, it reminds me a lot of the first one. Pretty much everything that I remember is similar. Um, you, you have four or five heroes that you start with in your group, which I think is like uh, Captain America, Iron Man, um, Wolverine, and Spider-Man, I believe. It sounds like they just have the Avengers. Is Thor one of them? Thor is in the game, I believe. Yeah. yeah, how many unlockable characters are there? Have you have you played a lot? I haven't played, like I said, I've only played the first level. And you unlock them as you go along throughout the game. Uh-huh. So I don't really have too many. Like, from the point where I left off, I just got, like, Gambit. So Gambit's in it, Deadpool's in it. Ooh. It has a lot of heroes. And, and if it's anything like what they do with the first one, they're going to have a lot of downloadable content. Because they sold extra heroes and stuff. Like, um, I think the pre-order bonus, if you got it from GameStop, is you can play as Juggernaut, which didn't really make much sense to me. No, it doesn't. Bad guy. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, retarded. Well, yeah, but it's it's a fucking Juggernaut, bitch. Ugh, I can't <laughs> believe they put that in the movie. That was awful. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> but uh you know from what i played of it it's pretty damn cool i like it a lot uh i'm looking forward to when our friend mr cripple picks it up and uh we can go through it even more <clears throat> so can't really i'm trying not to give too many pins opinions on it because like i said i haven't really played it very much yeah but i'm totally it. looking i what? really want pork chop sandwiches now why the really yeah. The, the guys who did the X-Men thing did the G.I. Joe PSAs? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's weird. The vo- One thing I actually kind of note that I did find bad with the game, I don't remember it being this bad in the first one, but the voice acting is horrible. The voice acting is always terrible in a video game. A video game based on a comic franchise. Yeah, it was just bad. I didn't really enjoy it that much. <laughs> Like Wolverine, they had the typical raspy voice for Wolverine, but the guy sounded kind of gay at the same point. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Did he like? Did he have a lisp? I don't know. It, it just caught me like kind of off guard. I didn't really like it that much. But hey, I don't Bob. Play as... Yeah, it's kind of like that. Ah, uh, <laughs> put it in my pooper, Bob. They just they just grabbed a guy who's been smoking since he was four, and he just happened to be gay. Now imagine. You have claws coming out of your hands and talk is basically like all they tell him. Man, he must be the biggest hit over at that S and M gay bar. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the voice acting's bad, but again, this isn't the type of game that I care about for anything like that. I'm just gonna be shooting the shit with our crippled friend and uh playing it. Yeah, it's just like watching a TV show on mute. You're yeah, just there for a, the eye candy. It's a mindless beat 'em up, that's all it is. But the fusion attacks are pretty cool, where you can like fuse your your um, like ultimate superpower. Oh my god! Attack. You can fuse. You can fuse, not like Dragon Ball Z style. <laughs> that's that's what I was, I was trying to bring it back. Yeah, you don't have to do a stupid dance. It's so weird, right? retarded. But uh, no, like say like I'm I'm my Iron Man and you're like um, Captain America. We can fuse our attacks where I like launch this big attack this big beam at you, and you use your shield to redirect it at all the bad guys? That sounds like a terrible idea. It's actually pretty badass, man. (laughs) Here, hold still. I'm going to shoot my most powerful weapon at you. Let's hope we don't miss. Oh, (laughs) fuck. Now you don't have an arm. That's Captain America. Nothing's going to hurt him. He's for freedom. He represents freedom. He's dead. Yeah, that's true. They, They haven't brought him back yet, have they? No, I don't think they have. Ah, oh. he shouldn't be in this game. <laughs> no, this this game actually like takes place like I think back in old times, like World War II, which technically means what? Spider-Man shouldn't be in it. Then ninety percent of those guys aren't supposed to be there. Yeah, I don't know when it takes place. I'm only in the first level. Stop fucking me up. <laughs> I can't talk about the story. <laughs> oh man, there's gonna be like a time warp or an alternate dimension. <laughs> Or this is before Crisis, or is that well, DC? Well, when they did the time warp, that's actually ended up like uh, with Captain America or, or maybe Spider-Man, I think it was, going and fighting zombies. 
Spider-Man is the least effective guy you want fighting zombies. <laughs> I don't know. Because he can wrap them all up. He can wrap them all up, but he doesn't take them out. So in an hour when his webs disintegrate, those zombies are going to be all back. No, because he can apart. be there to, to reinforce his web. What was that? He can be there to reinforce his web. Yeah, but then he just has to stay there. What if he runs out of web cartridges? Because he always does. It's fucking Spider-Man. He'll come up with something. He's, he's surrounded by zombies. He's better than the goddamn Batman. What would the Batman do? Uh, I don't know, actually. What would what would Batman do? I mean, if if there's a zombie outbreak, I think the the one the two guys I would want the most would be like Gambit and Deadpool. G- Gambit, Gambit would just, yeah, Gambit makes sense. Deadpool would just shoot the shit out of him. Well, if that's the case, why don't you get like Cyclops? <laughs> Because Cyclops is gay. He is gay, but he's got eye beams or optic. He's got an optic blast. Gay beams. That's all they. Sh- they're gay beams. What? Because it's pink. Yes, with a rainbow in the middle of it. I don't know. <laughs> that would explain why he's in that gay pride parade. <laughs> so yeah, that's Marvel Ultimate Alliance too. I'll be uh, talking about that more. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think that's about it for me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. our challenge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, we did have a challenge. Yeah. Okay. Why are you whoa, whoa, whoa me? Uh, I was going to say, I thought we had a gentleman's agreement that we were going to wait till after I finished moving. Yes, so but I, I was going to this. announce that on the show. Oh, okay. You douchebag. Well, I just took your, I just stole your thunder. God damn it. <laughs> but I uh, know. Okay, so uh, at the time on the last episode, I, I don't think we kind of realized how close it was to you moving. Yeah. And, uh, and these are kind of games that you want to sit down and, and pay attention to. I'm like a ninja guide where I'm going to just try to, to bum rush. And uh, so, you know, I was already pretty close to getting through Chrono Trigger. And Kyle seems kind of unhappy over this because he hasn't even started Final Fantasy VI yet. Nope. And uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to be the, the nice guy here, Kyle. And yeah. I'm going to put off Chrono Trigger. We're going to put off this challenge until you're settled in for moving. Oh, thank you, Josh. You're the best. Right, so probably this will be one that we get back to in, what, November? Uh, yeah. That should be plenty of time. Okay, so in November we're going to pick this back up because, again, like I said, it kind of seemed unfair uh, for Kyle to try to fit this in with moving, and I don't think we realized it at the time, so... I'm cool with that, and Kyle's cool with that. Yes, I am. And, uh, yeah, so that's where we stand with our challenge, but we do have a voicemail, Kyle. We have a voicemail. And it's from Mr. Paul from the illustrious Video Game Jocks podcast. Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna play it now, because he calls you some pretty bad things. Oh, god damn it. Alright. Alright, let's do it. Hey, Josh and Kyle, this is Paul from the illustrious Video Game Jocks podcast. I just wanted to, uh, talk to you about the last show, how you, uh, Josh, you kind of shot down when Kyle's talking about Halo 3. Give him a break. He, he likes the Halo 3. Kyle, stand up for yourself. Don't let him, uh, don't let him shoot down your love for Halo. What Halo's the, the fuck am I supposed to do? And, uh, also, it does have three new maps and Firefight mode. So, come on, Kyle. I know you're too good for gaming news, but try to keep up with the crowd. Right? All right, and uh, yeah, so apparently, I, I, if I recall, when we did our top five and you got to ODST, I said boo. I think you did. Which, yeah, it's a bad compilation. <laughs> what do you expect? It's six hours for 60 bucks. That That's oh. p- pretty crappy. Oh, wait, and it comes with three more Halo maps, Kyle. Three more Halo maps. Not, not Halo ODST, but Halo 3 maps on the second disc. Oh, and by the way, you can't use those maps, apparently... Without using the ODST disc, you can't use your standard Halo 3 disc. Oh, how does that work? Do you pull out your disc and then put in a new one? No, the second disc has all of the Halo multiplayer on it. 
Oh. So it, uh, all your rankings in Halo 3 go to shit now? No, it's, it's the same thing. It's basically Halo 3's multiplayer. It's like they extracted the multiplayer section out of Halo 3 and put it on the second disc. So it acts just like Halo 3. Oh, I see. So that falls back on what I said is this should have been a fucking expansion of Halo 3. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Yeah, this this is a ripoff, people. If you don't see that, then you're dumb, and I hate your face. Um, but other than that, I can't really speak of the game because I haven't played it. <laughs> but it's dumb, and you're dumb if you played it. Yeah. And uh, apparently, Kyle, he, he gave you a little dig there for not reading gaming news. I have my reasons. I don't feel like reading the same shit over and over again. What, you don't like some MPDs? Nope. No, I do not. You don't want to hear that this developer says that programming for the PlayStation 3 is harder than this developer? Nope. What's wrong with you? Sorry, I just, you know, want to be entertained through my day. I don't want to read boring garbage. That's right. It's about the little cats. By people who aren't actual writers. They're just people. Bloggers. With, yeah, they're just people with a computer and a loud typing voice. <laughs> So, uh, Kyle, how can people give us voicemails if they so choose to? Well, there's a... Well, to give us voicemails, they have to call our voicemail account, which is 909-C-STRIKE. 909-278-7453. Oh, people know how to put in C-STRIKE. I, it's habit at this point. Uh, whatever. I, gotta, I just got to like mute my mic when, when you do that. <laughs> yeah, you say it, but it's muted, so it's okay. Right, right. And how can they email us if they send They can to? email us with uh, their preferred mail application or program or whatever they have at cstrikepodcast at gmail.com. Very good. And uh, can they reach us on Twitter? Yes, they can. You can either contact me at KR Dumond, Josh, who's Nacero, or you can contact us using the Critical Strike Twitter account, which is, I believe, C Strike podcast? No, it's Critical Strike. Oh, it's Critical Strike. I didn't know you had that. I, I wasn't planning on using it, but apparently now we're going to. Hey, might as well. Alright, that's fine. I, yeah. why, why else would we have it? I just use it as a placeholder, in case we ever did decide to use it. Well, we just decided to use it. Well, you decided to use it. Yes, yes I did. Well, you do have the account information. You can talk to the peeps. Yeah, I suppose I could. <laughs> Contact us here so we won't talk to you. <laughs> Yeah, All pretty right. much. And uh, leave us iTunes reviews if you can. Remember, we if, love we them. Get to, if we get to 40, Kyle is going to print them all out and roll around on them. And I will, I'll record it, and I'll put it up on the YouTubes. Ex- yeah, exactly. Naked. And, um, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I said no to that. There's there's no no naked stuff. Again, I don't know what you're talking about, Kyle. I, yeah, yeah, naked. Um... And I suppose that's going to do it for uh, Critical Strike 44. Okay. Pretty quick episode this time. Yeah, yeah, it was. But, uh, you know, you're moving, and I was busy all week, and we talked about some video games. We did, Yes, we did. With a lot of Dragon Ball Z references. Yeah. Which will never happen again. N- no? I hope not. It probably will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. Kyle's out of here. We'll see you next time. Good night, people. Later. Bye. Why do you have to say bye? Why do you always have to get the last one? All right, that's it for uh, Critical Strike 44. Uh, one thing I did want to note, uh, after we recorded this podcast, uh, Kyle and I kind of talked about the scheduling issue that we we mentioned early on in the episode, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that bad. Like, we're going to miss two episodes. It looks like we're going to miss, like, one, maybe, which the critical music is going to take its place. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to be as bad as what we mentioned. We kind of had a mix-up in scheduling there. And, uh, yeah, so that's where we stand with that. But <clears throat> after we recorded, we well, while we were recording, we noticed uh, there was another voicemail, and we didn't get it until after the fact. But I'm going to play it here. It's from Kyle's good friend, uh, Paul Nash. You might recognize him from one of our episodes that we, he was on, uh, titled The RPG Nerds, if I believe. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Paul, for the voicemail. 
Thank you both Pauls for the voicemail, actually. It's kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, so, here you go. Hey, what's up? This is uh, Paul. Just uh, wanted to give you guys a call. Quickly, I have an idea. Uh, one of you guys can challenge the other two once you've finished, once Kyle's finished uh, Mega Man 3. Um, and that would be Battle of Olympus. I think, Josh, you could take that if you would like. Uh, you were also missed at yesterday at a very fantastic party held in honor of uh, one Kyle Zuman leaving the general Philadelphia area and moving back home. Anyway, uh, if you haven't recorded yet, I don't know, give it a listen, whatever. Um, cool. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.